Okay, now coming back to the uh, first uh, important uh, setup. Uh, so we have uh, now completed this uh, ERP introduction part. So do you have any other question before we get into the modules? Okay, then then we'll start with the modules. So the first thing is, uh, so what I'll do is for in each of these modules, I'll start with the uh, the basic uh, setups which are required. And for all the setups, I use the uh, BR under document. And then I'll get, get into the data entry. So I'll do the same thing for all the modules. Each module first setups and then the data entry. So wherever possible, I'll, I'll try to avoid using the vision operations. But if we face any practical challenges and if you are not able to resolve that in a testing environment, then only we'll go for the vision operation. So Roy, to, to give you an uh, idea. So what is vision operations so like in this particular test environment? OK, vision operations is a kind of a, uh, a scenario wherein like like uh, we have got reliance group structure like similarly we got vision operation structure or vision group structure in this uh, environment and everything is already built we can straight away start using this uh, uh, what do you call um, responsibilities and start doing a data entry so what i'm going to instead of using this particular ready d available uh, setups i'm starting with the setups so once we complete the setup then we'll get into the data entry okay Yeah, and Arvind, when you when we get into the data, I mean data entry, uh, once we start off with a basic entry, can you just explain on uh, the accounting entry perspective? Sure. I mean, why actually we need a debit and credit account for each of each of the entries? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the first setup or important setup from a general ledger perspective is ledger. Okay, so what is a ledger like? Why, why, why do we call it as a ledger? So, uh, I mean, in all the in the olden days when we do not have an uh, ERP, okay, uh, the users used to record their uh, accounting entries or their business events or the business transaction in a accounting book, and that accounting book is called ledger. So that's how we got the word ledger. So whether you uh, uh whether you call any uh, whether you call any accounting and ask him about the ledger or whether you talk about any accounting package or erp everywhere we use the same word ledger so it's ledger is nothing but a kind of a book wherein you record your accounting transactions from an oracle erp perspective uh, ledger is a combination of uh i mean four c's chart of account calendar currency and uh, subledger accounting convention Okay, in Leva, in Leva, we do not have the subledger accounting convention. So in Leva, if somebody asks you a definition of ledger, so in Leva, the definition of ledger is the combination of three C's, that is chart of account, calendar, currency. And in R2, we have got something called subledger accounting convention. So I'll explain you about subledger uh, uh, accounting convention in more detail in my uh, future sessions. But for the time being, you understand that ledger is a combination of chart of account, calendar, currency, and accounting convention. So what are these? Uh, four like chart of account calendar currency and uh, subledger accounting convention okay so again uh, going back to the same example if you purchase uh, 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 some stationery in your uh, company so what you do is you pass a simple accounting entry your stationery account debit cash account credit okay and you specify the amount obviously you need to specify the currency and maybe this is incurred on uh, say 9th of september okay so this date is nothing but a calendar currency is this one and this is at a high level this this forms part of your chart of account so for recording of any accounting transaction you require all these three that is what is a chart of account what is a calendar and what is a currency so whenever you are recording any accounting entry you need to specify the amount you need to specify the currency you need to specify the date and you need to specify your accounting entry okay and i think pradeep asked this particular question like uh, 
how do you know like what account to be debited and what account to be credited okay in an erp world generally it's not mandatory that everybody needs to have the accounting knowledge but if you got an accounting knowledge you can better appreciate and you can understand what is happening in the background the reason why i say that it's not necessary to have an accounting background the reason being most of the transactions if you are not going for any kind of a customization if you are doing a vanilla implementation that is without any customization everything will be taken care by the system only thing is you need to do some kind of a configurations and system knows like whenever you create an ap entry what needs to be debited and what needs to be credited similarly when you create an ar invoice system knows like what needs to be uh, debited and what needs to be credited similarly in the fixed assets uh, when you just create an asset systems know like what should be the depreciation entries to be created because these are all pre configured within oracle but no if user say that no i want to uh, instead of um, when you create your uh, ap invoice instead of this particular account i want some other account to be debited instead of this account if i, I want some other account to be credited so that's where your accounting knowledge will come into picture and that will help you in making a changes to the system okay but at a high level i mean i'll not get into the total accounting rules from a core accounting perspective but at high level all the accounts at a high levels are divided into uh, three categories so this is the main accounting rules to pass the accounting entries this is again this particular thing what i am talking about is not from an erp perspective it's in general so whether you use the normal accounting uh, wherein you record your book of uh, your uh, transactions in a book or in any erp whether it's an oracle or uh, sap it's the same thing because these are the core accounting rules so there are three accounting rules nominal account rule uh, real account rule and personal account rule what this rule says is debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains real account debit what comes in credit what goes out personal account debit the receiver credit the giver so these are the main three accounting rules based on which all the accounting entries are formed but you need to understand what you need to pick up from these three rules whenever there is a accounting event so if uh, taking this example of accounting event whenever you purchase some stationery okay you need to understand uh, as far as the debit is concerned so there could be a scenario debit could be picked up from say nominal account credit could be picked up from say real account so it's not necessary that debit and credit will be picked up from the same rule it could be from different rule so you need to understand which rule you need to pick up okay as far as this accounting entry is concerned stationery purchased okay debit all expenses and losses so taking this particular rule you are debiting the stationery account and credit what goes out so when you are purchasing some stationery so what is going out from you cash is going out so you need to credit the cash account that is credit what goes out so taking this credit what goes out rule of real account you are actually forming this particular entry wherein stationary account is debited and cash account is credited similarly whenever you purchase say assets you are debiting an assets account why you are debiting an assets assets account debit what comes in what is coming in into your business asset okay and why you are crediting cash because credit what goes out so this is a scenario as per this entry is concerned you are just using the debit and credit of real account and passing this particular entry okay so in general for any kind of an adjustment entry which are passed directly in gl the business users knows what to be debited and what to be credited because in a general ledger system does not generate any kind of an entry you just create whatever the entries which you want but as far as the sub ledger is concerned users will not pass any accounting entry they create an accounting event so when they say accounting event creating of a invoice is one accounting event making a payment is another accounting event okay creating of an asset is one accounting event running of a depreciation is another accounting event you you run those you create those events based on the event system will create accounting entries in the background is this clear yeah okay
okay now coming back to this uh, uh, the four c's first we'll start about the chart of account so what is a chart of account structure chart of account structure is a combination of a segments which will help you in recording your business transaction and uh, which will help you in reporting so what is this combination of the chart of account uh, combination of segments which form the chart of account structure so in this example here you are saying a stationary uh, of hundred dollars is being incurred and you passed an interest stationary account debit cash account credit okay so if there is no erp you would have passed this particular uh, and this is for one particular company okay if there is no erp you would have passed this particular uh, entry in one particular ledger which belongs to one particular company but you also want to know under the particular company there are so many departments so for which department this expenses is incurred so you make a note of the department of that particular company so there is a company say 01 okay and the department is maybe say uh, finance department uh, not finance but say sales department okay for sales department you incurred uh, this stationery so you make a note of company 01 uh, sales department uh, and uh, stationary account is debited 100 dollars and cash account is credited with 100 dollars okay if you want to record the same thing in an erp whenever you are passing an accounting entry you need to uh, what you call select that particular segment structure that is you need to select the company code which is 01 uh, say hyphen and then the department so department would be a finance so even for finance we give some company from some codes maybe say 001 so 01 hyphen so this particular entry in an ERP world will be 01 hyphen department will be 000 and stationary account even for the stationary account you give some code say 15000 something like that or sorry give say 24050 that's the one code and for cash account also you use same company same department and then uh, account could be 25051 so this is how the accounting entry looks like in a erp world okay so when you put your cursor here and in a uh, in a general interest scale you will be able to see the descriptions of these things but for an easy data entry perspective for all the segments we generally follow the codes rather than the description so this is the accounting entry in the normal uh, non-erp world and this is the accounting entry in an erp world so through this particular segment structure it is easy it's easily possible for you to do a proper reporting and you can do a reporting on okay let us assume there is one more company say zero two and you incur the same uh, what you call uh, stationary expense of say hundred dollars okay you record this journal entry and again you record this particular journal entry now it is possible for you as we are using a different uh, company segment structure in a different uh, uh, company segment structure so when you run your reports you can run the report with c01 which will show you that there is an uh, stationary expenses incurred under 01 for 100 dollars similarly if you run the report for uh, say 02 you can see that uh, there is a stationary expense which is incurred for an amount of say 200 dollars so that's how you can run the report uh using your company codes or you can or you can run one more report with say only 24050 okay and all other uh, segments being blank then it will show in that particular report you can see that the stationary expense incurred overall for all the companies is 300 dollars similarly how much cash has gone out of your business if you if you run the report with just a comp with a uh, account segment of 24051 then you can see it's 300 dollars okay so it is very important to come up with this particular number of segment structure before you start with any implementation okay so in my uh, i mean so when you say 01 and 02 are companies sir, are there operating units ledgers no they are not uh, ledgers or they are operating units they are actually uh, in this example you can call it as a legal entities 01 is so okay so if you go back to this reliance structure okay Reliance Communications is 01, Reliance Textiles is 01, okay? So this, uh, this is an example wherein I passed a general entry directly in GL, okay? I did not use subledger. Wherein under 01, I passed an expenditure of $100. And 02, I passed an entry under 02 for an expenditure of $200. So these are two legal entities and this is a direct entry in GL. Okay. 
okay okay got it yeah okay so as far as our example is concerned uh i have taken uh, let me just open my br under i think i have taken six segment structure company department account sub account product intercompany so this is the structure which i have taken for our example and generally in any implementation project uh, what you do is you also include something called future one future two okay assuming that in future if you want to use uh, two more segments then you, you you preserve two more segments because as i said that it is not possible to change the chart of account structure or even if it is possible or, or even if you want to change your chart of account structure through a custom solution it involves a lot of time and money so that is the reason why instead of going for a re-implementation or instead of going for the custom solution most of the clients whatever i have seen is they go for two more future segments so that as of now you will not be using these segments but in future you can start using the, the, those segments okay but of course this being our testing environment i did not create any uh, future segments so this is my segment structure in my uh, demonstration okay so what i did is uh, we'll start with this reliance inr ledger okay under reliance inr ledger we'll create two legal entities reliance communications and reliance company code okay and then we'll start with the reliance postpaid and reliance prepaid operating units when we get into the sub ledgers as we are still at a general ledger level uh, uh we'll start with the ledger and the legal entities we can proceed with these operating units when we are talking when when i get into the sub ledgers module okay So I don't think like in any training session generally they will they'll not be sharing this kind of BR hundred. But I prepared this uh, BR hundred document, mock BR hundred document, just for our setup so that it will be useful for you when you are practicing. So most of this uh, what you call uh, steps are in a kind of a sequential order. So uh, uh, Roy, just for your understanding, in any real implementation project, we use uh, this BR hundred document to do a configuration it could be in excel or it could be in a word document some people have seen use a word document but i feel excel is uh, more comfortable but at the end of the day whether you use excel or uh, word document so what is more important is the content oh, wow. so this is how we actually uh, this is our uh, one of my real uh, implementation project br 100 i have uh, taken a copy of that and uh, i modified that to me uh, to meet our requirements So, as I, in this example, as I said, like uh, I have created a chart. Uh, uh, I'll be creating a chart of account structure with the segments, six segments. So, for each of these segments, there should be a placeholder wherein you can hold those values. So, when I say company, zero one, zero two, zero three, and so on. So, there should be a placeholder to to hold those values. And that particular placeholder is called, in Oracle terms, it's called value set. Okay. So for each of these uh, segments, you need to assign something called a value set and within the value set, you need to associate the values. So you give some naming convention for this particular value set, which will be something like a Reliance GL company. That's the name of the value set. And for this particular company, under this particular value set, you need to associate, uh, you need to specify or you need to store the values of say 01, 02, 03 and so on. Similarly, for department, there will be some value set, and for under the particular value set, you need to store the department code. So, for say finance department will be 000, HR department will be 001, sales department will be 002, something like that. Okay. And for uh, similarly, for the account, sub account, and product and intercompany, uh, there are some value sets which are created, and there will be values. And again, when you are defining your chart of account structure, that's where you specify what should be the length of my company code, whether it should be two digits or three digits or four digits. Again, this is also one of the important decisions. Once you come up with uh, the digit, that is say two digits or three digits, it's not, I mean, it's not possible to increase it from say two to three or three to four because it will have an impact on so many other 
different table structure so in our uh, in our uh, chart of account segment structure i mean that is mentioned in my br 100 for company i have taken a size of two digits so that is my company codes will be 0102 something like that and my department i think it's a four digit code which is uh, four or three digit code it will be 001002 something like that account is a four digit code similarly sub account is a four digit intercompany is a two digits and product is some uh, i think two or three digits something like that okay so now i'll start with my br100 so this is what is the value set so first before he, i before i start with this particular chart of account structure i need to create the value set i need to create the value set keep the values uh, associ uh, associate or enter the values under the particular value set and then come back to the chart of account structure and assign this particular value set to this chart of account so uh, so first we'll start directly with the value set because when you are creating this chart of account structure it will ask you to select the value set so that is the reason first you create the value set enter the values and then start with the chart of account structure so that is the reason why in my br100 uh, document first i'll be starting with the value set okay so properly i explained you uh, with the navigation so what is the responsibility which you need to use what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, what you call name of this particular step so this particular step is defining a value set and this is the responsibility which you are using and this is the navigation you need to navigate this to this particular uh, uh, navigation something like setup financials flex fields validation sets okay i think before i start with the navigation i need to explain it to uh, i think rohit rohit uh, in oracle in order to perform any kind of a function or any kind of a uh, activity you need to have something called responsibility okay so you got so many different response okay okay so here you can see the uh, once you click on something called you, once you click on this hat you will be able to see so many different responsibilities so for all your user ids there are a couple of responsibilities which are automatically added by the system and if you want to add a, a few more responsibility then you need to go to something called system administrator responsibility and there you can add the responsibilities i'll show you that uh, a little while so a responsibility is nothing but a combination of menus and functions through which you can perform some action and the naming conventions are such a way that like each uh, responsibility say if i talk about say general ledger if the responsibility name is starting with the general ledger so that means it's a gl module if the responsibility name is starting with say payables then that's nothing but these are all the payables related uh, so if you go to these particular responsibilities then you will have the functions or the menus related to the payable activities similarly if you go for the receivables if you go to this receivables responsibilities then uh, you will have the uh, menus or functions related to the receivables and generally the naming conventions again it all depends on the business uh, scenarios or like the uh, the business users how do you name your responsibilities generally in this example you can see the naming response the naming convention of the responsibilities is module name comma uh, the company name and the currency of that so in our example now the uh, responsibility naming convention will be general ledger comma reliance inr ledger or reliance inr something like that general ledger reliance usd general ledger reliance cad so that will give you a, a proper uh, looking at the naming convention itself it will give you a proper picture that okay that's if when you get into that particular responsibility that's a general ledger related responsibility that's related to reliance company and that's that's under usd ledger something like that so you need to follow proper naming convention okay so but uh, so uh, before you start with this particular uh, setups uh, now we do not even have uh, reliance related responsibility so what you use is generally oracle provides some seeded responsibility in any implementation project once they provide you soft software they give you some seeded responsibility say general ledger super user just the general ledger super user uh, payable super user receivable super user something like that you can use those responsibilities or you can you can even use this vision operations also okay uh, let me try to use the those responsibilities so this is the responsibility system administrator responsibility you can go to this particular responsibility and assign the responsibilities whatever is required for you if those responsibilities are not there okay and uh, rohit again for your uh, information 
uh, in oracle whenever you open a form mm -hmm. okay security user define okay if you want to query of something do f11 okay and then put your criteria so in this case i want to query with my user id i think my user id is like this is my user id okay and then do control f11 f11 put the criteria and then control f11 okay and let us assume if you do not know the complete value okay so this is the wildcard character which is used in uh, oracle throughout all the oracle forms the wildcard character is percentage similarly in windows we use star so similarly in oracle we use wildcard character of uh, percentage okay and here put your cursor here and then click on this plus button and then here this is where you can add the responsibilities whatever is required for you so now i want to use the gen ledger super user responsibility okay this is the responsible so in any implementation project first you start use first you use this seeded uh, oracle when i say seeded it's a oracle provided responsibility you use that particular responsibility and continue with the with your setups once the setups are done then before you start with your data entry uh, transactions then you need to assign something called some profile option i'll explain to you what are those profile options and once the profile options are applied to your responsibilities then you can start using those responsibilities okay Okay. okay click on this add switch responsibility so you can say uh, uh, my responsibility starting with g right okay you can directly press g or percentage general ledger percentage so it will show all the responsibility which are starting with the word general ledger okay now i want to use the general ledger super user okay so this is what is mentioned in the br100 document general ledger super user okay Hey guys, so do we need any break or can we continue? I think I'm um, good. I can, yeah, we can continue. I mean, in case yes. other stuff. Okay. Okay. So, under general ledger uh, super user, so this is the navigation setup, financials, flexi fields validation sets okay so our segment structure is uh, uh, six segments right okay but for the intercompany we'll use the same value set okay first we'll start with the uh, a placeholder wherein you can hold the company values so we'll create a value set for company okay so this is the naming convention so i just use some uh, naming convention rel gl company description is also rel gl company or you can use reliance gl company code that's just a description okay and uh, list type is make it as list of values here you got uh, i mean these are a kind of a data types from a table perspective so by default just go for the list of uh, list types and security type is uh, no security go for non hierarchical security so i'll explain you what the significance of this non hierarchical and hierarchical security when i talk about the security rules okay for that for the time being just use the security type as non hierarchical security okay and what is the format type so what when i say format type whether you want uh, the value whatever you are entering whether it's a character or a date or a number so even though company code is a number better go for character so when you go for character you can enter name or a number but if you go for number you should always go for a number okay and what is the maximum size i want to use a size of two i want to go for a generally uh, for a company code i think two digits should be fine because so when you say two digits you have got a combinations of up to 99 companies or if you if you want you can go for three when you go for three then you will have combinations of 999 but generally uh, a number of companies being uh, uh, added in future will will not be uh, so frequent so i think maximum size of two should be 
fine okay and then save this okay what i'll do is like in all my setups i'll go through only the important fields i cannot get into each and every field because if i get into each and every field of each and every setup then we'll not be able to complete our uh, sessions okay so whatever is required whatever is important i'll cover those things okay so this is the placeholder for company code and okay and if you go back to our uh, chart of account structure we got company department account sub account product and intercompany so ideally we should be creating the value sets for department account sub account and product and uh, these things but what i am doing is for the, for all these four i am using the existing value sets which are already available in the system because if i create a value set for this and creating of a values will take a lot of time especially for accounts we require so many different accounts uh, uh, for so many different modules so i think there will be close to thousands of uh, accounts which are required so what i'll do is i'll use the existing value set whatever is available in the system so for a department we will use the uh, value set which is already available in the system okay so this is the value set which is already available in the system operations department which will hold the values for department segment okay similarly for the account this is the value set which is a four segment structure and there is already a value set which is available in the system i am using this particular value set similarly for a sub account and product are also there are value set which are available in the system and i am using that particular value set so for uh, department we will be using operations department value set operations account operations sub account operations product and for inter company generally we will use the same value set as that of your company so i'll explain in more uh, detail about the inter company when when i talk about the inter company functionality within the gen ledger i think it should be covered uh, somewhere here when i'm talking about the consolidation somewhere i'll talk about the uh, okay i'll talk about the intercompany generals here okay whether somebody dropped off i i heard about i heard a beep i hope everybody are on am i right yes yes sir okay okay so this is the first step uh, creating of the value set so any questions as of now so uh, we are basically creating a chart of accounts and before chart of accounts we are uh, we are we have created a value set where we will assign some values to it right exactly exactly yes okay. before we start with the chart of account structure we need to create these value sets which will hold the values okay okay, okay. so that's the first step of creating of the value sets and out of these value sets i created a value set only for the company but for all other uh, uh, segments we'll be using the existing value sets available in the system okay okay, okay. so the first step is creation of the value sets and the second step is uh, creating of the uh, okay uh, creating of the values right okay creating of the values we can also do it at a later point in time or we can even do it now itself okay once you are done with the value set now the next step is creating of the values under the value set so as i said that these are all the existing value sets which already have the values under it so we need not create any values under this value set we need to now create a values for only this new value set okay so this is the navigation setup financials flex fields key values uh, pratap i saw you silent hope you are uh, following am i right uh, 
I think Brother is showing offline. Okay, I think he's the person who dropped up. Okay, fine. Okay, setup, financials, flexi fields, key, values. Okay, so here find values by value set. Select this and uh, what is our value set name? Okay, I think I should say find values by value set and our value set name is uh, this is our value set. Hello Pratap, are you there? So click on find you will not be able to see any values because this being a new value set this is where you you need to specify your values and this value set will hold those values okay so now coming back to our structure okay we will create five values okay as of now we'll be using only this particular value but uh, for our future reference for our uh, future sessions or rather for the future concepts uh, we'll be using uh, these company codes okay you can very well come back as of now you can create just one particular value set uh, value under this value set and then you can very well come back to this particular screen at later point in time you can add these values or you can do all the values at a time now okay so zero one is reliance communications so i'll use a value of zero one and uh, description is reliance communications okay and then Uh, 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 hang on, it's not giving a low budgeting and everything. Okay, hang on, okay. I think, uh, okay, better will follow this sequence itself, okay, because this is not coming okay sorry uh, we'll follow the sequence itself okay create the value sets for the time being do not enter any values we'll come back to this particular uh, assigning of the value set a bit later okay so once the value value sets are created the second step is creating of the chart of account structure okay you need to use this navigation flex fields key segments setup financials flexi fields key segments and then here first you need to do is what you need to do is you need to query with your general ledger press down arrow and you need to uh, search for the accounting flex field so uh, Rohit for your understanding in each of the modules we got something called key flexi fields and descriptive flexi fields okay so for the time being, keep your descriptive uh, flex fields uh, aside. Okay, talk about the uh, key flex fields. So every module has got certain key flex field wherein you actually define your segment. So in GL we got one key flex field which is called accounting flex field. So in inventory we and uh, in the other modules you got uh, different uh, 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 what do you call uh, uh, key flex fields. So from a general ledger perspective, the key flex field is accounting flex field. This is where you create your chart of account structure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so under general ledger, flex field uh, uh, of accounting flex field, put your cursor here, click on plus button, and then create your structure. So, what is the structure? Reliance accounting flex field is the structure, or you can use the word reliance COA, chart of account, something like that. It could be any naming convention. Okay, I'm using the word reliance accounting flex field. Okay, you can use the same value for the code, title, and description. Okay, these are internally used at different places. 
but uh, yeah you can use the same thing reliance accounting flexibil okay and then click on so this is the name of our chart of accounts reliance accounting flexibil is name of our chart of accounts okay and then click on segments so this is where you specify what is the uh, number of segments which you have and what is the order of those segments the first segment is company so again if you follow your uh, br100 first segment is company window prompt is company and you need to specify the column that is whether it's a you got uh, 30 segments available in the drop down so you select uh, the first segment as segment 1 okay and then there are a couple of other things uh, which we need to do i'll come back to that now put your cursor at uh, second row and what is your second segment department and you specify segment 2 and third segment is account specify it as segment 3 and fourth account the uh, fourth segment is sub account segment 4 and uh, fifth segment is product segment 5 and the uh, sixth segment is Enter company. Save this. Now we are seeing this is the company segment, department segment, account segment, sub account, product, and enter company. Okay. So whenever you are defining any chart of account structure, there are mandatory you need to have at least two segments, and those two mandatory segments are company segment and account segment. Okay. and again here company segment account segment are just the names whatever you are giving but how does system understand it is really a company segment because in the system there are a lot of different functionalities uh, for a company segment and different functionalities for the uh, what do you call account segment so how does system understand that it is really a company segment so there is something called flexi field qualifier so put your cursor under company click on flexi field qualifier and uh, select this uh, balancing segment so this attribute is used to identify the balancing segment this is typically the company segment so enable this save this okay. now system understand that this particular segment so even the name could be even abc you can put any name but obviously it should be a proper naming convention so the, this is how now system understand this segment one is the company segment because you have associated this particular attribute similarly for the department department is nothing but a kind of a cost center okay put your cursor at department click on flexi field qualifiers this attribute okay so this attribute is used to identify the cost center enable this for the department segment save this now put your uh, cursor under account click on flexi field qualifier associate this as the national account this attribute is used to identify the national account segment when you say national account which is nothing but account so associate this save this so for saving the normal windows shortcut is is control s or you can even click on this save button and for sub account product there are no flex field qualifiers for inter company yes there is a flex field qualifier click on uh, flex field qualifier and inter company this this attribute is used to identify the inter company segment so select this one so there are inbuilt functionalities for these uh, segments which are identified as a balancing segment or a national account or the inter company segment so you should properly choose those values and again it is not suggestible to come back once the data entry starts uh, it is not suggestible to come back and make the changes to those flex field qualifier again this is actually as i said this is a one time setup Okay, so any questions here? Hey, uh, Arvind. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't select, what is the impact for this structure? Okay, so as I said, okay, as I said, company and account are two 
uh, mandatory uh, what called flexible qualified let us assume you have not selected company i mean you have entered these values and did not select flexible qualifier for any of these segments when you compile this chart of account structure it it's going to go into an error and it will throw a message saying that at least one segment should be because uh, uh, what do you call identified as a balancing segment okay. at least another uh, segment needs to be identified as a uh, or needs to be set with a flexible qualifier and national account okay it will throw an error message okay and all other things are optional only these two are mandatory company and account are mandatory okay at right now you you did it for the company cost center account and intercompany right sub yes, account and product is make it blank yeah, right yeah yeah that's true yeah okay okay and 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 also uh, arvind uh, i think we can select multiple qualifiers for each of the segment right uh yes that is also possible but uh, uh, i have not seen such kind of scenario but that is possible yes but generally in general company and account generally you associate it with only one segment i did not see any kind of a scenarios wherein you associate uh, the balancing segment uh, qualified for more than uh, one segment but maybe the other things like cost center and uh, there are there are other things like uh, uh, the management segment and secondary tracking segment this can be identified to more than one segment are associated with more than one segment i mean my my question is what is the for example let's talk about the sub account and product only mm -hmm. so can they be identified with the same flexible qualifier which is which is which is flexible qualifier are you talking about again account or a company code no something else maybe intercompany which is not a mandatory one okay so as far as the company and account is concerned you are good right so as far as the uh, we have already assigned uh, some uh, flexible qualifier here as far as the sub, sub account is concerned okay ideally uh, generally for cost center national account uh, sorry uh, national account balancing segment and intercompany segment these three has got some kind of a functionalities within the system somewhere down the line okay so it is suggestible to assign any of these three segments to only one of the segments don't assign this flexible qualifier to more than one segment okay but as far as the cost center is concerned it's already associated with the department yes you can if you want you can even associate it to some other segment also but practically i did not see any such kind of a uh, uh, scenarios but from a system perspective yes you can associate this cost center uh, to the sub segment which is it's already asso uh, associated with department but if you want you can even associate that to some other segment that is say sub account but don't associate <laughs> these three especially national account balancing segment intercompany to more than one segment okay and what is the use of having multiple uh, multiple qualifier i mean is there any specific use uh, for that okay so for, uh, you mean to say uh, uh, say sub account having say both uh, intercompany as well as the uh, say cost center something like that right right i mean uh, if we have multiple qualifiers is there any specific use for it uh okay so with regard to use so as i said that like each segment has got each flexible qualifier has got a sub, uh, distinct uh, functionality within the system so let us assume for sub, sub account if you use the uh, flexible qualifier as intercompany segment and cost center segment then down the line whatever the features which are available for both intercompany segment and the cost center segment you can you can see those functionalities for just one segment itself but as i said that i did not practically see such kind of a scenarios wherein more than one flexible qualifier is assigned to one segment but if you assign that then whatever the features which are available to those two flexible qualifiers can be seen with just that one segment okay, okay. when we talk about features uh, do we discuss that in as part of this training yes, I mean, yes. What, whatever some oh. somewhere yeah somewhere down the line yeah okay so we have completed uh, assigning of the flexible qualifier so if you look at my uh, br100 document okay so this is where i had specified the uh, flexible qualifier so first is uh, balance segment is yes and for all others it's no so that means i have not enabled that okay and uh, department is the cost center segment and uh, account is the national account and for sub account i did not associate any flexible qualifier product no specific qualifier and intercompany intercompany segment is the flexible qualifier okay so i had completed uh, this part okay 
so we have entered the name window prompt segment now we need to associate the value set so this is the value set reliance gl company okay and then displayed enabled that is enabled okay display is called yes enabled is called yes and then click on open button so when i say click on open button click on open button okay so here you need to specify again like whatever you have entered in the previous screen that's defaulted here okay the company segment one whatever you have entered in the previous screen that's defaulted here only thing what you need to do is you need to ensure that everything is checked here it's a required checkbox when you say required checkbox so whenever you are doing a data entry this particular segment is mandatory needs to be entered in general i don't see any kind of an optional uh, 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 i mean uh, i don't see any kind of an optional field for any of these startup account segments mandatory for all these segments you need to check this required checkbox okay and check this security enable when i say security enable uh, i'll talk about the features of the security enable when 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 we are discussing about the security rules so only once you check this security enable checkbox that's only that's only when the system will allow you to use the security rules functionality within the system save this okay segment 1 we have used the value set reliance gl okay and this is the size of the display size 22510 so whenever you are uh, opening up a, a chart of account uh, segment value screen what should be the size of the uh, what should be the size of the uh, segment it should it should be two digits and what should be the size of the description description should be description so reliance communications so description i said 25 characters and concatenated uh, description uh, uh, i don't remember where exactly this is being used but generally the description is for the the entire description of the reliance communication and this is for the that number 01 okay save this that's for the company and for the department now we need to associate the value set so what is the value set which we need to associate uh, for the department any guess what is the question arvind what is the uh, value set which we have decided that we will be using for the department segment operation uh, department yeah that's so yeah as i said that for all other segments we will be using the existing uh, uh, value set so we'll use operations department for the department operations department okay and now click on open now ensure everything is automatically defaulted check this checkbox of security enabled and appropriately set the display size 32520 you may ask a question like how did you ident how did you get to this uh, details of uh, the sizes so i looked at the existing uh, setups and i copied some values from there and the third segment is account and what is the value set which to be used operations account okay this is the one operations account security enabled display size is description size is 25 and operations sub account okay and there is something called a default type and a default value so what we will do is as far as the default uh, value is concerned default type is say constant and default value is 0000 so when i say default value so that means whenever you go to any data entry screen wherein you uh, pull up the chart of account segment value screen as far as the four segment is concerned by default it will, it will give a value of 000 that's a default value if you want you can change the value but uh, if you do not want to change the value you can leave that as is so generally the sub account and product segment that is segment 4 and uh, segment 5 are least used will be going with the default value for those things okay See. 
and uh, product operations product click on open security enabled Two twenty-five ten. So three fifty. And the last segment is intercompany. So intercompany generally we need to use the same value set as that of the. Uh, Balancing segment that is a company segment. See this open security enabled. Okay, so now we are done with the chart of account structure that is company, department, account, sub account, product, and intercompany. Okay. So once you start using this uh, setup, you will not be able to make any changes. Uh, I mean, most of the changes system will not allow you to make any changes to uh, these segments. So it is very important for us to uh, review these uh, setups and then save this and start using that. Okay, save this. So once you save this particular structure, the next thing is what you need to do is you need to click on freeze flexibility. Uh, okay, there's one more button called uh, Allow dynamic inserts. Okay, I'll explain you the significance of this uh, during our data entry. See, check this checkbox. And what is the segment operator? Uh, what do you call separator? So when I say segment separator, uh, in my example, you would have seen. So what is the separator? Whether you want to use the separator, I mean, company hyphen department hyphen account. So whether you want to use hyphen or whether you want to use a period which is dot so we'll go for dash okay and then check this checkbox okay make sure you do not want to make any more changes to this uh, definition before freezing the uh, flexible unfreezing and changing the definition later could affect the validity of the existing data for your flexible so it is throwing a kind of a caution so it is asking us to review all the changes and then freeze once you freeze this flexible definition it will not allow you to make any major changes to the uh, chart of account structure so click on ok and then click on compile button compiling flexible definition click on ok the flex field was compiled successfully submitted request to generate flex field view so and so click on ok so uh, in Oracle, there are a lot of uh, cases wherein once you do a setups, once the setup is completed, it will throw a kind of a message saying that some request is triggered in the background. So what you need to do is, so in this example, so you saw a message saying that some request is triggered in the background. So you need to go and check whether the request is completed before you start uh, using this particular chart of account structure. Okay. Now, in order to check uh, the concurrent request which got triggered in the background, what you need to do is you need to go to view request click on find see this is the request which got triggered compiled key flex field okay and it's come you should ensure that it is completed normal you should you should ensure that it is not completed in warning or it is not completed in error in some cases completed warning is fine but completed error is not a good sign if it is completed in error then you need to click on this view output when you click on view output it will show the Error message as to why it has completed an error, then you need to appropriate you need to take an appropriate action to rectify that error. In some cases, the out uh, may, uh, the error message may not be an output; it should it may be in the log file. So whenever it completes an error, try to check both output as well as the log file. Okay. And if you click on view details, just it's uh, for the benefit of uh, Rohit. Uh, when you click on view details, it will show you. Uh, the person who has submitted this so requester that is me and at what time it's completed so this is in uh, this uh, server is in us est time zone so you'll be able to see all the time uh, timings in us ust time zone so whether you use the system from austria or, or india or from malaysia or from any country always the server settings is uh, the server is actually set with the us est hours so you'll be able to see the timings in us est hours a clear with yeah, well. yeah 
I mean, in this case, we are in, uh, using instance, right? I'm uh, the servers and everything will be like it will be a different uh, thing altogether, probably. No, no. Even in implementation project, also, uh, the, I mean, uh, Oracle has given a functionality to go for uh, multiple time zone functionality. Also, if you implement that multiple time zone functionality, then uh, then what? Then the person who is uh, sitting in Malaysia will be able to see the uh, timings in uh, Malaysian time zone. Uh, the person sitting in Austria will be able to see the timings in Austria time zone and so on but if you go for the uh, global time zone that is if you do not implement that multi time zone functionality then irrespective of the person using the system from anywhere in the world he will always be able to see the server time so in oh, okay so in my current client i'll give an example we we have got operations in close to 25 countries uh, even though we are uh, using our uh, uh, system in more than 25 countries but uh, at the time of implementation we have taken a decision for some business reason that will be will not be using the multi time zone functionality and all the people throughout the world uh, whenever they are using the reports or whenever they are using the system they understand and they are already trained that everything will be in us est time zone okay arvind can you can you explain about those two unchecked box cross validation segments and freeze roll up groups okay so uh, so if you want to use the cross validation rules functionality you need to check this checkbox and uh, cross validation functionality is one of my topic cross validation rules define cross validation rules okay when we are def defining about the cross validation rules we can come back to this particular screen and check this checkbox okay there are some uh, 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 when i get into that particular topic then i'll explain you what is the cross validation rules but at a high level now if you want to use the cross validation rules what you can do is you need to check this particular checkbox okay now unfreeze this check this checkbox again freeze this okay compiled okay similarly for the uh, freeze roller groups uh, i'll cover this particular roller groups functionality when i am explaining about the summary account so summary accounts is also one of the topic summary accounts so we generally use the roll up groups for the summary account so at that particular point in time we can come back to this particular screen and check these check boxes uh, please remember that like even though we start using the system as i said that in the startup account structure there are certain things which you can change so even though we start using the system we can come back to this particular screen unfreeze this and make the changes to these check boxes that is check or uncheck but see here uh, so in this case now still we have not started using the system so still system is allowing us to make some changes here okay you cannot make changes to the segments but you can make some changes to this okay but once you start using the system it will not even allow you to make any changes to this flex field qualifiers are at the segments okay is that clear uh, niranjan yes yes yeah. So this completes the uh, chart of accounts definition. Now coming back to the chart of account segment values. Okay, as I said that uh, we have defined only one new company, uh, sorry, new value set for company. We need to define the values only for the company. For other things, I'll query up and show you the values because these are the existing value sets we have used. So the values are already defined in the system and we are using them. Okay. 